Yeah, there was a convergence of things back in 2008 that interested me and made me sort of take this leap to video games as a therapeutic uh, tool. Um, I mean, the first is that I was motivated to work on new types of uh, interventions to improve cognition because as a neurologist, uh, I find that um, the way that we treat, which is largely dependent upon small molecules, pharmaceuticals, are not very effective for the things in, in our world. And that's true for psychiatry as well. And so I was excited to pursue a new approach and see if we can improve the variabilities that we find decline with aging, as we just discussed, interference processing, but the, the larger scope of cognition as well. Um, and so I was trying to find what would be an interesting and, and, and novel area for me to investigate. And I was inspired by a couple things. First, being here in San Francisco, knowing so many people that meditate and do other forms of um, sort of self-treatment and therapies, um, really sort of opened my eyes to this idea of what I've come to think of as experiential treatments or experiential medicine. The idea that you can engage in a certain practice that doesn't involve ingesting something that challenges you, that harnesses your plasticity, um, which you referred to, and can act to improve our function. Um, and we, these are ancient practices like mindfulness and meditation. Uh, so that was one thing that was interesting to me. Um, but I saw many limitations in those fields, like the need usually to have a high-level teacher and the accessibility issue that may be around here in the Bay Area. There's lots of meditation um, classes and retreat centers, but it's not everywhere, and it's not necessarily completely affordable for everyone, and it's also not the same type of interactivity that everyone enjoys or finds um, uh, you know, something that's amenable to their lives. Um, there was another literature that seems very different but also attracted my attention, and that was uh, research showing that commercial video games, so video games that are designed really for entertainment purposes, have been shown in careful research studies to improve cognition, especially the research on first-person shooters, very uh, sort of immersive action, action video games, and their ability to improve cognitive control, attention, and working memory, and resistance of distraction, the very things that I study, um, especially in younger adults who tend to play them. And so I was looking at these two worlds that seem very different, you know, ancient meditation practices and video games, and realizing that they're probably both having benefits because of their applied pressure that they're placing on different cognitive systems uh, through very different types of interactivity. Um, and I was interested essentially in sort of combining these ideas. Could we design video games from scratch that may be putting pressure on different systems than they standardly do in entertainment games, um, but take advantage of the fact that technology can be used to deliver very accessible experiences because we all have phones and tablets on us and Wi-Fi connectivity. The other thing that I was very intrigued about that hadn't really been done to the level that we are doing it now is using the technology platform to capture information about an individual while they're interacting with the media and using that data in a closed loop fashion to update the challenges and the rewards in a personalized way. That's something that real world experiential treatments like meditation, for example, suffer from. That you are really not getting a personalized treatment. Um, and even video games, which are updating levels to some degree, are not doing so in a very rapid fashion. And so to conclude, the idea is to use a video game as a platform to deliver an interactive experience where the mechanics of the gameplay are activating networks in a selective way in a manner that we've never achieved with a molecule before. And then the closed loop system, which is adapting the challenge and the rewards in an appropriate way to you in real time based upon data, applies pressure to those systems. So the brain's own inherent plasticity optimizes its abilities. So that was the general idea 10 years ago of why a video game was interesting to us to custom build for this, this purpose.